Hi, welcome to Max8 tutorial number 18. More analog, not analog, but something like analog audio. You may remember this. Um, hopefully it's not songs from your childhood, but um, you're remembering our last video tutorial. So we were working with our keyboard that we had made before in a previous tutorial, and we were running it, the keyboard output, um, out to the, oops, the IAC driver bus 1, receiving it over here through node in, and then making these little mod, uh, splitting it up by way of poly, so that uh, separates the note ons and notes off and sends them to the appropriate place. And then we had sort of made these little modules here, called Johnny Analog. Here it's locked, right? We'll just look inside there. And we had done this very simple thing that um, made this saw object um, work as sort of our oscillator, and the saw makes a a saw blade type, a saw toothed um, wave, which is what you hear and what you see right here. Now then, we are never satisfied with just doing the simple, so I thought I would show you some um, A, ways to save parts of your patcher so that you can reuse them more easily, and B, open up some options here. So let's um, click this thing open, and inside here we have the uh, saw, and let's just uh, unlock this and say we want, we want more sound, so we want to get the, um, uh, what's the other one, the, the nice one is uh, type an N and type cycle, and you want to make sure it has the tilde, and now you can put 440 if you want to, but you don't have to. And then there's another um, oscillator called a rectangle. So uh, there we go. Rectangular pulse oscillator. So there we go. And um, we could have the choice of using these things if we worked out the inside of this little patcher correctly. So instead of just coming out of saw, what we're going to do <clears throat> is make a new object called selector, not to be confused with select, selector tilde, and you'll notice that the tilde always shows up when you're, when you have uh, waveforms going through it, and you'll also notice that most of the patch chords coming out of that end up having this nice uh, stripey look to them that tells you that they're carrying waves. So, whoops forgot to add in the arguments here, the selector. How many inputs do we want? Well, right there, we need three of them. And uh, which one's open normally? Let's just make it number one, so that it, they're all open at the same time. So now we've got three inputs, plus our selector uh, part. So what we're going to do is stick the selector outside of this, because we have six channels. So let's go up here and make a new inlet that will go to our selector. And um, then we're going to run the saw in the first one. We're going to run the cycle in the second one. And we're going to run the rectangular pulse oscillator in the third one. Then we have to get these um, to come out from the bottom of the selector. So this one's going to move over here, and then also this patch cord that used to go from saw to the um, gain control is also going to go over here. So now whatever's going through here is going to have to go through the gain to get out of here, and also our little um, scope window. Uh, we'll show whichever one that is. Now, just so that we can see that for right now, um, I'm going to make a little thing. In, well, I can make it out here. It's fine. Um, 
here we go um, making the switch we're going to type uh, unlock this type in and type radio button radio group sorry radio group and then space three oh no you can't do that just it's just a radio group then we have to go in the inspector to change the number so highlight it go in the inspector scroll down number of items three so you have to double click on that and then just type a three and then click on something else and there you go um oh they could also be check boxes but we want radio buttons sorry just got curious there okay so here's the radio buttons radio buttons is one of those things that if you click on this it puts out a zero and then a one and then a two and we don't want that for the gate so we have to put another object in here which is type n and then uh, plus space one so whatever if it's a zero it'll select a one and etc etc you get the idea so now when we do this um, lock your patcher you'll be able to see the difference in the wave here because the wave does not run through the gain control so you can always see it so there's <laughs> whoa um, oh it probably doesn't have a um, it doesn't have a frequency pumped into it yet here we'll double click on that again look we just made these and I didn't give them a frequency yet oh goodness me I didn't even connect them uh, unlock this and we'll also connect this 220 here over to cycle and then also over to the rect rectangular pulse sign pulse modulator whatever it is okay and now um, if we uh, lock that up and hit a button uh, hit our key at least six times well we'll know that when this one turns on oh there it was turned on right away so now all of these things have um, a frequency in them so they can operate so let's go back over here and see what they look like so there's um, the, the cycle that's cycle this is sawtooth there's the sawtooth and then down at the bottom is the is the pulse wave so they'll all have different sounds and we can control them from here but you've obviously realized now that if we play our fantastic machine here and I'll give us some volume to do it yes one of these things is not like the other right and so how are we going to change um, all of these now to be like this are we really going to copy everything out of there and put it in here the answer is no, but we're going to do it for just a minute. What we're going to do is take this and um, oops, click it open, unlock it, and save everything. Uh, excuse me. Copy everything inside it. So you just say copy. And then open a new window, Command N or Control N on a PC and just paste it right in there okay now save this file in your max folder as um, whatever it is meaning uh, mine is called Johnny analog so I'm gonna save it as Johnny and whoops Johnny analog oops I hit the caps lock there analog okay there it is and I'm saving it into my teaching patchers which my Max knows where it is Johnny analog okay so now that we've done that we can put this away I know it seems funny and we can close this one too and now when we come over here and unlock this patcher instead of notice it says P Johnny Analog. That means that this is just a sub-patcher in Max called Johnny Analog, right? I'm going to change the name. I'm going to get rid of the P so that it references the separately saved file Johnny Analog. 
I know, it seems crazy. Look, and it even comes up there. Max has already found it, so I'm going to click on it. And there it is. Now, if I go along here and do that to every one of them, it's Johnny Analog again. Johnny Analog again. I'm going to keep saying Johnny Analog again for a while now. Oops, I didn't say it. Okay, here we go. There. So, now we have an interesting new thing happening. Whenever we save Johnny Analog here, it will update every one of these, and they'll all be the same. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, if you were to send me this patcher, 17M8 Tut Analog Audio, let's just assume that you were going to save it as 18M8 More Tut Analog Audio, or something appropriate for this tutorial, um, you would also have to send me this file, because it is a separate file. Okay? So, that's a little bit of a tricky thing. Now, uh, I think you understand that, but I'm just going to say it again. This is now a separate file, all its own, and when you open it and change something, it changes everything, it changes something in all of them. So let's just, let's, oops, lock your patcher, open this one, and we're just going to, for no reason at all, um, and look, here, this will even show you. See that? So, hey, this is a, a read-only file because it's a separate file. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to modify it. And I'm going to unlock it. And I'm going to put a big LED in here for no reason at all. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to use it for anything. There it is, right? Now I'm going to lock that patcher. And I'm going to save it. Okay. Now you may remember that was this first one here. I'm going to come over here and open up number five. And now it has an LED in it. So that's a good way when you have all these separate channels. Or imagine you had done a 12 voice piece and now you wanted to change them. It would be a big pain in the neck. But now that you have made separate patchers for this, you can do it all at once. Isn't that great? So continuing along our greatness, we're going to now hook up to the second inlet that we added for all of them. And I'm going to use the, the shift here. I push the shift down, click, 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 let go of shift, and click. And now, when we lock our patcher, we can get them all doing the same thing. This one's really funny. This one just doesn't want to do the same thing. Or, um, now let's hear that mellow sound yeah, some of these don't have, um, they don't have uh, frequencies in them yet, but they will, as soon as we play a little bit. What I love about perfect um, analog things is that they they, they get in each other's face so much you can hear how they interfere with each other because they're perfect waves. They're not like your usual sounds. So anyway, that's what cycle sounds like. And let's listen to uh, the square pulse thingamajig. So we now have a way of um, switching um, the three types of oscillators that we have in our machine. And um, we can do something else, too, that I, I think you might like. If we were to take, you uh, unlock this for a minute, and let's just take, like, all these oscillators and hold shift down so you can get all these and this here selector and maybe even this uh, speaker thing here though we could do it another way and let's 
make them all available in presentation. So presentation, include in presentation. There we go. And then we move them around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, let's put it in presentation now. And we'll just move these around like so. Oh, uh, I forgot how much I hate radio knobs. Radio groups, it's, excuse me. Um, and let's say something like this. And then here's another thing that I've never showed you, so I'm just going to show you. I'm going to get all these, and I'm going to say arrange. I'm going to go up to arrange, and I'm going to say distribute these horizontally because I don't want to have to do it. So this will keep them all nice and even. See, isn't that nice? So if you need stuff to like work out nicely, you can do it that way. Okay, so there they all are. And now I'm going to do the other crazy thing that I was almost threatening to do, which is, let's uh, type it in there and type B patcher. And now I think you've figured out what I am in fact going to do. I'm going to put this thing in here, stretch it out like this, and go and get my patcher file of the keyboard. There's my keyboard. Open. There it is. Oh, it's a little small. I have it all zoomed in on the other one to make it big. But um, we can work with this. We can work with this. Um, Put the B patcher there just so we know how big it is. Um, let's bring our Does that work? Does that even make sense? I don't like that at all. Uh, oh no, I, I, I think we can do I we can work with that, can't we? We can. Okay. Move the B patcher up to the top there. I'm going to use my arrows a little bit, just so it moves nicely. Move this up a little tiny bit. And then, another thing that's sort of fun to do, if you grab these all at the same time, you can also resize them all at the same time. Isn't that cute? Right? Well, I think it's cute. And now I'm going to arrange them... Uh, oh, uh, I'll move them all first. Here we go. So that I can estimate this better. Better make them a little tiny bit. Oops. Reselect. Better make them a little tiny bit smaller again. There we go. And then uh, arrange them. Distribute them horizontally. There we go. No. Distribute them horizontally. There we go. You have to only click on the little box. That's all you get. And then um, if we wanted to, you know, fix this up, you know, we could probably uh, make the background light, light green or something, but I'm, I'm pretty happy at this point. And then um, I'm going to, oops, lock that, select plus one, and now we're going to do something. Whenever you have two of the exact same objects open um, and their interfaces, be careful because they're both they're going to interfere with each other. So we're going to go over to this one, and I'm just going to put it away. Go away. Okay. So supposedly, now we have our keyboard over here. I think this is pretty funny. I don't even know what it is. It's one of anyway. Um, so we've got that working. We've got uh, the possibility to. Let's go down an octave and listen to that. Oof. Yeah, they really 
They can really interfere with each other. It's great. Oh, I went down two octaves by accident. That's why. And then um, we can also use our square wave. Nice, nice. So um, you can imagine dressing this up a little bit, I'm sure, and then also um, going back into that um, those modules. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, unlock this and put this somewhere else, like over here, out of the way. Um, and you can also go back into these. How are we doing here? Oh my god, 21 minutes. We can probably do something in three minutes, right? Well, maybe not. I guess that's enough for today, people. So we've built this gorgeous thing, and we could now... Um, where's my locked patch of color? Just real quick here. Come on. Where? Um... Something a little yellower. There we go. I'll take that. Then we go over here, we lock our patcher. There it is. Uh, and we get rid of the inspector and we put this thing up here like this so we can really feel like we've gotten somewhere. Look at that. All in a mere three tutorials or something like that. And remember that even after you play your... Um, right? You can still go back and play the synthesizer because this thing just does everything. Right? Now I can go back to IAC-1 and play a little uh, sawtooth. Anyway, so that is it. We have really done up the keyboard, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.